Can't dance. I used to dance. Welcome back. You are watching Candy Fresh, and we're going to go ahead and get right into this beautiful song, Stress. Everybody give it up for Miss Chantel Sings. <laughs> so, you are a singer, songwriter, entertainer, radio personality. You be putting on uh, organizations, not organizations, but putting on events for, for the women's and the. Just why don't you do it? Because it'll sound smoother when you say it. I don't even know how to say it myself, <laughs> but um, I'm just so passionate about everything. And I've always been a multitasker, so I just do too much sometimes. So, I'm not going to say too much. Um, I think everything that you do is, is coming from your heart. It's a lot. I, 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 I was this morning alone. I was in a four-hour meeting with the American Cancer Society. Um, I just became a board member there a leadership uh, volunteer board member with the Cancer Society. I'm going to stop you right there. I want y'all to give it up for her, and I'm t and I, and just for this, because Miss Chantel is an ovarian cancer survivor. Okay? Survivor. And so she's taking her story and using it on the board to serve other people. Can you tell us about that? Because I don't feel like I'm going to do it justice talking about it. Man, it's um, 11 years. I was 23 when I had ovarian cancer. Um, I had a tumor on my ovary the size of a grapefruit, and the tumor is about the size of an almond. So think about a gra grapefruit on, sitting on top of an almond. It's, it's, it's big, and I was 23. My son was probably about four. So um, it, I always long – I'm going to make a long story short, but I just want people to understand that ovarian cancer is very real for women. I know we hear a lot about breast cancer and all kind, colon cancer. We hear about a lot of different cancers, but – I honestly don't think we talk enough about ovarian cancer because it's, it's a very deadly cancer. So um, when I found out I had it, it was kind of like that TV show House. It was uh, probably about five or six doctors, didn't know what was going on. I was sick for about two weeks. Before, before you found before out? Before I found out. And, um, and I called the ambulance myself. I was home by myself. I just couldn't take it no more. I called the ambulance, called 911. They came and got me took me to the hospital. I was there for a couple of days until they was like, we found out what was going on with you. And um, found out it was ovarian cancer. And um, it was deep. I was very, very afraid. But I made it through. That was 11 years ago now. So um, I'm just blessed to even be here. So every day is like a big deal for me. Just I hear here, you. I hear you. What, sure. what are you doing on the board? Um, so as a leadership board member with the American Cancer Society, um, I am a volunteer. So the, the, the crazy thing is that today was my first board meeting with uh, the Cancer Society. Nice. So, you know, it was very eye-opening because American Cancer Society does so much. I mean, everything from the political standpoint to legislators and uh, going to the state capitol and, and, and fighting for different laws. Like right now we're fighting for um, a law where – um, you have to be 21 to smoke versus 18, okay. and it saves a lot of lives for lung cancer. Mm -hmm. um, so it's so much that that's done. I mean, I was I'm sitting next to executives in big corporations, to doctors, to lawyers. Were you intimidated? Um, you know, the the biggest thing about it, it was it was very friendly. It was very genuine. A lot they were all nice, and I probably was one of the youngest people there. Mm -hmm. But everybody is so passionate because we're volunteers. You know what I mean? Right. These people have been sitting on the board for years, but they're making changes. The American Cancer Society is a billion-dollar organization, so it's a big deal. I'm just grateful that they allowed me to be a part of it, and how I came into it is a whole different story, but that's for a different show. Well, I am I want to say thank you on behalf of the ladies that are watching mm -hmm. because you are an inspiration, Chantel. Thank real you. talk, real talk. Thank you. Upside down, Lord have mercy. All right, so the next question is about your music. Mm -hmm. Okay, because we got a line of stuff to get through on your career tip. <laughs> but uh, word on the street is you got some new music coming out. I do have new music, and I'm, I'm taking my time with it. Um, I hear you. Because I love music. I always have loved music. Music is how I came out of college, and, and this is my broadcasting degree i did this for for my career uh or for my studies in college mm -hmm. but coming out of college i got into music after my cancer situation and the first wow. one of the first songs i wrote was called silent ground and that was just kind of coming out of depression and 
just being down and it's a whole it's such a deep story and i'm work i'm, I'm working on a documentary as well because i want people to know the full story because i want people to know there's so much to it you know that than what you see you know right. what i mean and that's a big thing for me i heard you in our little candy fresh green room you were saying that there's so much more to you that people don't know they just mm -hmm. see the flash and there's actual a human mm -hmm. behind there so mm -hmm. so i'm glad that you're doing that work and i'm really excited to hear some of the stuff are you putting what are you putting into the album what part because you own the successful side of the journey now so what what are you what's what this album going to be about um everything that you can think of in your life <laughs> no but it's it's so much the first thing was called competition and this song is for everybody i'm really um focusing on it being like toward the like the sports industry every everybody has competition right so um in any industry somebody's trying to take your spot yeah. right so this song is called competition and i i never really wrote a song like this like this is the side of chantel that you see but you don't hear you know what i mean so I, I might walk the walk but i don't talk like that i don't say that i've done this i've done that and you and you better be ready for me i don't talk like that when you was posting it i was like what is this chantel <laughs> i'm not used to saying this right. one. what is what is this about but i think it's so many different sides of me and there's so much in me and it's a million songs so it doesn't matter if it takes me another five years to put it out at the end of the day the music is still in me and it's never you. gonna go nowhere. i hear so you it doesn't i hear you i'm glad that you're taking your time because we got so For many sure. people complaining about music and how <laughs> folks ain't taking their time so that's you gotta take I, your time with the music with anything that you do with anything so let's get into these relationship tips you be giving the twin cities every I morning do, i do what i can okay so you are a radio personality on 89.9 kmoj we'll go ahead and shout out lisa moy <laughs> 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 Right, quick, quick. <laughs> um, and so my first question is, why did you want to do relationship tips? When you, I remember when you first started with Freddie, like, what was, what, what grabbed you about relationship tips? You know, the first thing when I first started the morning show on KMOJ, and shout out to Freddie Bell and my whole morning show team, because there's so many people involved: DJ Chuck Chisel, Chris Styles, Dahlia Taha is our producer, and. Um, but when I first started out, Freddie Bell said to me, you know, Chantel, whatever you want to do, you don't need to come on this show. It, at the time, um, it, there was two male co-hosts. And so he said, you don't need to come on this show feeling like you need to do the female thing. You can be do whatever you want to do. You want to do politics. You want to do whatever it is. So, But relationships is something we all go through. Everybody goes through relationships at some point. At some point, you're going to go through it. If you're 10 years old watching right now, just know <laughs> at some point you're going to go through relationship issues and, and all of that. So I just felt like it was well-rounded. It's something that we all deal with. And, I mean, I'm not the veteran when it comes to relationships. And right now I, I put it on hold so I can revamp it, okay. so I can come out with something fresh and new. But uh, Zodiac Love Compatibility is my biggest thing, okay. like Zodiac signs and that whole thing. So. Um, but I studied that in high school. So I, so it literally, if you say that you point out what your, tell me what your zodiac sign is, I know probably more about you than you know about yourself. I'm a Leo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she she gonna give me nothing. And I, I, no comment. Okay. <laughs> but but you see the main though. You okay. know the lion. Okay. This right. is everything. Right. That's okay. a Leo. Okay. This is confidence. True. All right. Guilty. Guilty is charged. Uh -huh. Any other events you got going on? Like maybe a divas on the rise or something. Um, so I am, um, singing with a band called R Factor and that, that band keeps me a lot, very busy and I'm so grateful to be a part of that band because we do everything from Park Nicollet corporate events to weddings to bunkers to Mystic Lake to all of that. Um, but I have some stuff going on outside of Minnesota, some stuff in Dallas and some stuff in Atlanta, but I'm just, um, just staying focused, trying to release new music, but I am a working girl, so I, I work. <laughs> so I know. Whenever the work comes, <laughs> I go. <laughs> and we are glad. I know part. how busy you are. We are so thankful that you even carved out the time to be here with For us. Sure. So uh, I just want to really point out the piece about being a single mother and and to, and working as a career woman and how how that and the balance of that and the mental mentality behind. How that. are you doing that? You know, I just feel like I, for some reason I really want to talk to women that are doing the same things and, and for people to understand how deep it is and how um, how psychological it is and to, to try to do both. And like just today, coming here today, my son had a PS4 emergency. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Excuse me. So he didn't have the remote to, to plug into his PS4 controller to, to charge his control. And I'm stressed about this. But why is, is this is my problem? Because <laughs> you mama. Right? You mama. And even when he's 30, he's going to have mama. But the fact that you go from that to work to back to 
today I was so tired and I'm cooking and I'm making like chicken nachos and I'm just like, son, can't you make this yourself? Well, every time I see you, <laughs> you are positive. You ne I, I've ne as long as I've known you, you've never had anything negative to say about anybody. Right. And I really admire you for that. Well, I love you, Sonny. You know, you, I love you. You sent me an email, uh, a Few years you gonna ago. do that, Chantel? No, I have to because people have to understand about you, your positivity level, and how genuine you are, and how you you sent me that email out the blue, and I had half a tear in my eye, just this one right here, and I was feeling like, wow. I mean, she said some things about me that I don't realize. When you're in the midst of working and you're always you on the go, you don't see what the impact that you have on people, mm -hmm. and people are always gonna have an idea of what who they think you are and what they think you're about until you get to know somebody. And I don't think you spent that much time with me. And you said to me, Chantel, you inspire a lot of women and i just hope that you continue to do that so i appreciate that about you for life like well, I, I mean that's a real i still thing mean it i still mean it because i'm trying so. to get my heel game right <laughs> even though she won't tell me where them boots came from i said walmart okay, now, you okay. didn't hear me twice i didn't hear i thought you was playing all right well, y'all give it up for <laughs> shit <laughs> <laughs> i ain't get these for walmart stay tuned more coming up <laughs>